is just a doorway into resurrection life and if i join you in your suffering then i'll join you when you rise and when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints my heart will still be singing oh my song will be the same oh christ be magnified let his praise arise, Christ be magnified in me, and oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life, Christ be magnified in me. Oh, I won't be bowed to idols, I'll stand strong and worship you, and if it puts me in the fire, I'll be Cause you're there too I won't be formed by feelings I'll hold fast to what is true And if the cross brings transformation I'll be crucified with you Cause death is just a doorway Into resurrection life And if I join you in your sufferings Then I'll join you when you rise And when you return in glory Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me.
Your name is Jesus. Your name is Jesus. 
died so we could live then you rose up from that grave oh, name another king like this has never been a love so great you died so we could live and then you rose up from that grave and name another king like this now all of her thoughts from the grave and name another king like this now all the authority forever belongs to you you reign in victory and name another king like this and name another king like this name another king like this Another king like this. Name another king like this. Cause your name is Jesus. Your name is Jesus. You're the light of the world. There's freedom in your name. You're awesome in power. You Light of the world, there's freedom in your name. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Jesus. Light of the world, there's freedom in your name. You're awesome in power. You reign forever. Light of there's freedom in your name. There's never been a love so great. You died so we could live. Then you rose up from that grave. Name another king like this. There's never been a love so great. You died so we could live. Then you rose up from that grave. And name another king like this. There's never been a love so great. You died so we could live. Then you rose up from that grave. And name another king like this. Now all of her from the grave and name another king like this now all the authority forever belongs to you you reign in victory and name another king like this name another king like this there's never been a king like this Oh, there's never been a king like this. And no one is like you. There's no one beside you. There's no one who's like you. There's no one who's like you, Lord. There's no one who's like you. There's no one who's like you. Every knee will bow. that there is no one like you, Jesus. We're singing it over every circumstance this morning that you, Jesus, there's no one who's like you. There is no one who's like you who sits alone and throned above the heavens and laughs at his enemies. There's no one who's like you, Jesus. And so we're believing this morning, Jesus, that everything bows to you, everything kneels before you because
because you reign alone. You are king alone. There's never been anyone like you, Jesus, who humbled himself and became obedient to death on a cross. But there's never been like you, a king who would raise victoriously and defeat the power of the enemy and crush the enemy under his feet. So we're celebrating you this morning, Jesus. We're celebrating you and the freedom that you paid for. We're celebrating you and the life that you, you enabled us to live, the promises that you enable us to step into. And this morning, Lord Jesus, we're stepping into everything that you are calling us into. We're stepping in and we're saying yes to you because there's no one who's like you, Jesus. There's no one like you. There's no one like you. There's never been a king like this. There's no one like you. Never been a king, never been a king like this. There's no one like you. No one like you. There's no one like you. There's no one like you. Oh, no, no. 
to worship you. You're the one who sits upon the throne. We bring our praise to you alone. Exalt the risen Lamb of God. May the wonders of your name be known in every nation, tribe, and tongue. Let earth and heaven come to worship you. We bring our praise to you alone. Exalt the risen Lamb of God. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, earth and heaven worship you.
Jesus. Yes, Lord, we shout out your name, Lord. We declare you the king. We declare you the savior, the risen one. There is none like you, Jesus. Just declare it, keep declaring it, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, there is one name under heaven before which every knee will bow, the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Your name, we bow before you, Jesus. We bow before you, Jesus. We bow before you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, you're the worthy one. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, Jesus. 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 Yes, we need you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we shout that out as one. We just declare Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We just lay our lives down fresh and new to you, Jesus. If you're able, I just encourage you, just get on your knees right now. We're just going to lift up Jesus here. We bow before you. We bow before you, Jesus. One name under heaven. One name under heaven by which we must be saved. One name. Every knee will bow. We bow our knees now, Lord, to you, Jesus. We bow our knees now to you as our sovereign king, as our savior, our lover, our bridegroom. We bow to you right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Father, I thank you for strengthening and encouraging every heart here. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening and encouraging. The name of Jesus is greater than every problem, every sickness, every disease, every heartache, every situation, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just go and meet all those needs. You're the answer. You are the answer. Lord, your word declares that we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Thank you, Lord, for your strengthening in this body right now. Thank you, Lord, as we worship you, as we lift you high, that everything else pales in comparison. Everything else becomes and has nothing. Lord, we surrender to you. We submit our lives to you, fresh and new, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We need you. We need you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If there's any part of our hearts that the Lord is saying right now is not surrendered to Him, as we're just bowing before Him, Lord, just we repent. Oh, show us if there's anything that we've been holding back, any part of our heart, our thoughts, our lives that we have just said, Jesus, you can have everything, but not this, not this area. Thank you, Jesus. Just come, Holy Spirit. Lovingly convict our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. We bow to you fresh and new. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We repent before you and we lift you up. Thank you, Lord, for your cleansing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Every area, Lord, just search our hearts. Just go deep. Every area. In Jesus' name. one, the lover of our souls. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the freedom. Thank you for the freedom, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
you need to, you can get in your chairs, but we're just going to go into a time of communion just to continue this, where I believe the Lord is just going to keep touching our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing encounter with you. Thank you, Lord, that you're releasing just your spirit over us. We submit fresh and new, fresh and new. Touch our hearts, even as Carl comes, Lord. Just touch our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that in sin, that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives to obey, you can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. This morning, I just want you to think about the, the choices in life that God gives to us each day and the choice that he made to go to the cross for us. He chose to do that because he chose us first. He, we love him because he loves us first. I want you to see yourself taking that choice. It seems pretty obvious that head glance, like, do you want to be a slave to sin? Do you want to be pulled down again and again by darkness, but what things have affected you in your past, the dead man, or do you want to choose to obey God for the righteous life, the righteous living? As we had this moment this morning of just worshiping God, lifting him up, and just exposing our hearts to him and his are exposed to ours. It's a time of refreshing, a time of release of things of ourselves and to a purification. Father, I just pray that you just continue to just work on each heart this morning, that we'll be able to be completely vulnerable before you, that we'll be able to make those choices with just a pureness and a wholeness and an honesty. I just pray this morning that you'd be honest with us, that you'd speak to us the things that we need to hear that we don't want to hear. We open our hearts to receive from you this morning, right now, that you just whisper those things or scream in our hearts, whatever is needed for the breakthrough in our hearts to be truly and fully aligned with you. Father, help us to make the right choices, to choose you above all else. As we take communion this morning, I want us to just to think about that choice that he made was he prepared his body and his heart and his mind for what he's about to do. As he was given that example for his, his disciples, his people that he was teaching, he was saying, choose me. And as you remember me through this, choose again and again, say, yes, Jesus, it is you. I choose your life. I choose freedom from sin. I cho choose to dominate what the devil tries to do instead of being oppressed by the devil. Father, let's pray just as to a sanctification over these elements we're about to receive. Father, let's pray that as we, we drink and as we eat, that we would be truly partaking of that choice of lifting you up, casting down our old selves, saying we are new, we are free, our dead man is dead, and our, we are alive in Christ. So we just receive your body now. Receive that as you gave yourself. We give our bodies, we sacrifice our bodies as living sacrifices for you. And as you poured yourself out, you poured out your very life blood for the forgiveness of sins, for cleansing of our hearts, that we could be able to walk in that free, newness and the free, standing before you with no separation, that we'd be able to come into your throne room. So we just receive that this morning, the cleansing of your blood, the washing afresh and new, to restore any 
covenant that has been tainted by our sin, by our desires, as we drink and receive of it. In Jesus' name. Just release just your spirit of compassion and boldness and love and joy and peace over each one this morning. It would be to walk in the power and authority of your kingdom that as you walked out and you were king of the devil, that we would be able to walk with that boldness this morning as we go out from this place at whatever that time would be, that we would be able to hold on to that and always remember that we are your instruments. And we surrender to you constantly, every day, continue to die to ourselves become alive in you. In Jesus' name. From Pastor Semmel and Mama Vera in Ghana, and just hot off the press a few minutes ago in finished form, <laughs> lots of things going on. But we are so excited about what the Lord's doing. We're, we're gearing up, we're ramping up in 2022. And so we're going to show that and then explain things after. So you can turn the lights off. Turn the sound up, please. happy and so blessed uh, to have it uh, done in, and seeing it in reality. Mm -hmm. I also chosen uh, Ghana to, I mean, be part of the vision that God has for you guys. So we are here to appreciate what God is doing. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Pastor Mary Pat, Pastor Bill, and everyone of you guys. Uh, this vision is not going to be uh, something that I think is going to benefit anybody is going to benefit every one of us. You know, it's going to benefit everybody, and uh, uh, it's going to also uh, be a blessing to the kingdom uh, ministry, uh, the people that we are going to rescue and then send them to their home are going to be people that are eventually be trained and then uh, nature them, uh, bringing them to know the things of God. I believe uh, eventually we're going to have uh, evangelists, uh, pastors, teachers, apostles, and so on and so forth. And hopefully we may be getting uh, uh, doctors and nurses in them. And so whatever God has laid on your heart to uh, come and begin over here in Ghana, northern part in Ghana, I think it's in order. And we love it. We are here to embrace it. We are so very happy. Uh, Mommy, who also, uh, she's ready to uh, help for the school uh, that will be starting over there. And so uh, just before Mommy will come, uh, Mommy would say something. I think it will also reduce the, uh, the immigration of the children to the south, where they bring them to the south and then uh, they are forced into forced labor. And uh, some are they're carrying a huge stuff on their head and then giving just a small money for the work done. And some are also forced into uh, prostitution, some also, you, I mean, they don't have a place, proper place to sleep, and so these are some of the things that is challenging, you know, so we want to uh, help reducing that um, immigration. They, 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 some people from the south goes to the north and then uh, they see their parents and then they talk nicely to their parents as if they are bringing them down to the south to 
uh, help them to help the, their family back in the, in the village in the future. But they are all liars. Some are also even be sold, you know. So uh, I think this uh, vision that uh, you guys are about to implement is going to help a lot and assist um, uh, the ministry to, uh, I mean, uh, get people who in the future are going to be uh, uh, good workers in the kingdom. So we really appreciate it. Mommy would like to uh, add a voice uh, with the school that uh, she also would like to contribute. Uh, praise the Lord. Yeah, I'm so excited about the school. And wholeheartedly, I will involve myself because this is the work of the living God. I know God has his own time to do everything. And this is the time for Ghana, the northern part of Ghana, to be blessed by the team and Pastor Mary Pratt and Pastor Bill. We are all excited, even how this new scheme, I know you have the plan, you have the plan already, but God time owns time is this time so that it is coming to fulfillment. I'm so glad and I will be parts, not parts, I'll be in full support to train the school children and even the teachers so that they will have time for the children, they will understand about the kingdom ministering the school children and even the teachers so that they will have time for the children, they will understand about the kingdom ministry so that we will involve ourselves through everything from the one to the day that the Lord will come. So we I'm so excited and it's very good. Last week I went to Accra to buy books. And if you see people from the north, how they are being used, small, small children, carrying goose and heavy goose. Even they can't carry, but they are forced to. Then they give them small money. I was so sorry for myself. And I said in my heart that this is a work that the Lord has put in your heart to come and rescue these children because it's too tedious for them. They can't, but they are forced to bring them. It's not their own choices to come, but they do, the parents doesn't know how they are being used in the South. So they will go give the, uh, the parents just a small money and they will say something that will switch the parents. If they bring them, oh, they will be this, they will be this, they will be this. Then they bring them in forced labor. And if you see where in, in the night they are sleeping, you'll be, you'll be so sorrowful, sorrowful. Because some people are sleeping at uh, stores outside. Maybe in front of the stores. In front of the stores. Out, outside. They will be there like this. I mean, very cold. Very cold. Uh, no shelter. Nothing. Mm, open space. And it will come, and they will wake up early. Where they bath, where they do everything is so something that I can sad. Sad. That you cannot. I cannot even say it. So I, I, I'm next time when I go to Accra for books, I will take next year. I will take. Pictures. Pictures. You. And I will send it to you mm -hmm. so that you know that it is the Lord who is leading you mm -hmm. to do such a thing, not by your might, not by your power. Praise God. Uh, we just saw this. I, I have not seen this yet. So the vision is, 
is, uh, has been cast already. We released a lot of this, or some of this anyway, at the annual meeting. And then we had a um, global mission team meeting, meeting, commission meeting on Monday, and we took some further steps, and we are talking to Pastor Samuel Mamavera virtually daily, and we have been for quite some time. So things are in motion, and Andy's gonna put up a few pictures that Carl shared last Monday, and then also a diagram. Carl, could you just come up briefly and give an overview of, of all of this? Because we want to keep moving. Uh, it's not a mission meeting, but we want to give glory to the Lord as these things are being seriously launched. So Andy's going to put up the pictures, and then Carl can do whatever. Uh, so this is land in northwestern Ghana, uh, southwest of the small city or town of Sola, and that uh, paved part of the in the upper left sort of the screen. That is a power substation. So our our land is uh, just south or east southeast of that. So those orange or these yellow push pins, A B C D, that's our these are corner property lines. The yellow block that's right there is our uh, existing place where we have held the uh, Bible, um, Kingdom Bible School. It's just an open sh sided shelter. Um, and then the other yellow area is where we have a current structure that we uh, was built in, what, 2010, I believe, 2010, 2011 area. It expanded. It started out with just a storage building and expanded to um, these three, three rooms, the bathroom, and then a storage room. So that is in that area. There, that's the one. So that's the existing building. And we are going to be adding basically about 3,500 square feet onto that building. So this is the uh, complete unit. Um, so we're going to be adding on the word that says multi-purpose and then the four bedrooms in the corridor. That that's all new area, along with a new uh, kitchen, st um, storage areas, and uh, two bathrooms, expanding uh, with more septic system, another septic system, and an additional bedroom on the the, uh, on the top side of it. So this will be done in different stages. Uh, I talked to Seth Pastor Samuel yesterday about it, and it's going to be in Ghana, and as with every African construction project, it's one step at a time. So. Right now, we're looking at doing uh, foundation work, um, trying to excavate it. The trees that are in, in the way that we're building are going to be cut down or are being cut down right now. And then they're going to be doing the excavating, doing the foundation work, bringing in concrete uh, and sand, and kind of building up the walls then, because we have a lot of blocks that, is this 6,000, 6,000 blocks, 5,000 blocks that we currently have on the property that they're going to be starting with to build it up and keep doing one stage at a time. Thank you. There's been a lot of work poured into this and we, we just want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to see this. And on a, the um, Ghana Commission leadership, they will be sharing more as this goes along. This is just kind of a launch here for everybody, anyone who's watching on Facebook or um, YouTube or anything. So we wanna make sure you see that. Andy, did you have pictures that you would just flash through? for Ghana North, for people who've never been there, have no idea what this is. So this, uh, okay, there's Ghana North, there we are. Okay, another one. <laughs> Something that will be helpful. I, I don't know, Carl had shown a bunch on Monday, so if you can go through those as people are glancing up here, that would be helpful. That's what we talked about. Not just the, the terrain and stuff. But anyway, you can look at that. And I just wanted to just echo Mama Vera's heart. We're building a school. So the rooms that are bedrooms that you saw where the sizes, size of that white building will be tripled. They will also be classrooms because we are starting a school. Mama Vera has 10 years experience in starting a school down in Accra. And she is, she's done it from a kingdom perspective and built on that for 10 years. And so... That's, she's coming in to oversee that and run with that. She's very excited. And the children that will be attending that school, maybe others, will be children who will be rescued. The children will be rescued that we will be part of will be on our land. We're building two children's homes, brand new two children's homes. That, that, those two homes will be located between the Kingdom Bible School building, which if you can show a picture of that, Andy, 
and then the White House as well. And so those two homes will be built, one for the girls, one for the boys, and missionaries overseeing that. And we also have a, um, a cashew farm on the 22 acres, and those, those cashew trees that are living now, and we've gone through a process over the last three years or so, but now we have 1,700 that are viable, and we have irrigation, so this place can be more self-sustaining. This The location of this in northern Ghana is right on the border, near the border of Burkina Faso, Togo is south of that, and Cote d'Ivoire. And we have already been to Cote d'Ivoire two years, two past years, I think 2018 and 19. So the Lord is giving us that region, and then we're heading north out of, as we call it, the hump of Africa. So on the western side, this was the vision God has given us, and there's much more to it than this. But uh, if you are interested in hearing more about that and you want to partner with this, obviously we're going for it. And, and as far as like a headquarters for us for Western Africa, we are building that uh, opposite of the White House. So everything that Frontline has been able to hang out and do in, in the White House will now be transitioned into Kingdom Bible School training, future training, and also classrooms for the school. And so we'll be there. It'll be kind of a interesting mix for a while until it's all built and then on the other side of Kingdom Bible School building structure that currently houses the Sola Church where 18 to 20 branches that are up there church branches that are up there in that region that will be where we are building our compound within this large compound of 22 acres so if, was there a picture of that you had Kingdom Bible School up there okay we just to move on so Pastor Bill can preach also <clears throat> we just want to say thank you for your support over the years. <clears throat> and we're also and we're also really grateful for what God's going to bring in now. <clears throat> and it may have looked like nothing was happening for a long time, and that's not the case. The Lord's been working and pruning and building and changing, and now he's opened the door and the light is green. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So we're jumping in with all feet together, all hands on deck, in the midst of still going to Mozambique in February, everything we're doing in Brazil. So it's a huge, huge release for global missions, and uh, the Lord is really moving in it. So there's more to share that will come. We typically aren't doing a lot of this on Sunday mornings for obvious reasons, uh, but we wanted to make sure there was a follow-up from our annual meeting if you didn't get the audio from that. It would be very important to get that and then listen to what some of the ideas are. And you can sew into that. These projects are obviously uh, not cheap. So sew in. Let, pray before the Lord and ask God what you should do. And then see what God puts on your heart. And we'll see what, what we're able to accomplish in this season in 2022. Amen? So there is a picture somewhere. I, I don't know if you found it. Of Kingdom Bible School. When he does, that's great. We're going to show now um, just a short couple of clips from Brazil, and we're going to, Mozamb or going to Mozambique February 23rd through March 12th, and we're going to need all hands on deck here and all hands on deck overseas. <laughs> so lots a lot is happening right now, and there is an inauguration of the CISA Church, of the building on the CISA land, of the 60 acres, 60 hectares, acres of land, that we've been sowing into along with our land on the sea. And so this has been ready, and, and Pastor Samuel, Pastor Jose Novella has been waiting for us. He has wanted to take care of doing this, uh, and he's inviting Heidi Baker to come. He's inviting uh, Pastor Surpresa to be there as well. If Heidi's in country, she'll be there. And we're, we're part of, we are the inauguration with Pastor Jose and then area pastors and leaders around the southern part of Mozambique. So God has given us that, that territory to really move in. And so there are a lot of plans. We'll be working in three different provinces, and we'll be hitting the ground running. So it's, you know, the enemy is not happy about this, so it's not been an easy move. But the Lord, we believe the Lord is saying this is the green light. This is the time. Amen? So this is Pastor Jose, who sent something last night. And he's talking about the inauguration of the temple that you've all sowed into.
Hello, FMI. Greetings to you from Mozambique. Um, do you know what is happening? We are so excited about the inauguration of the Temple of God. And you know what? We have been waiting for you. Uh, in 5 March, uh, 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 I think in the first week of um, uh, uh, March, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday will be this great uh, uh, inauguration of the temple. So we have been praying and waiting for you that you are coming and it's going to be great and going to be a big blessing. So don't miss this. We are waiting for you. Love you. Bye-bye. Right to the point, Pastor Jose. So uh, if, if the, we've been in the formation of the team and all kinds of things getting ready for this with all that's going on, and, and I would just suggest to you that those of you who aren't sure what you're doing, get in the presence of the Lord. If you're looking for a sign, a, a, a dream, and a vision, you may not get that. What I told Pastor Jose yesterday was it is an actual privilege for us to be part of this because we have been sowing into this for years, in years and years, and not without a, a cost or a price. And I'm not talking financially, but we have sewed in financially as well. And so uh, this is very important for the entire nation of Mozambique. And Pastor Jose has cast that vision numerous times. The Lord's given us land on the sea that's an hour or so, uh, uh, what is that, west of that? And so northwest of that? And so we're going to be building that as, on that as well. We believe in this year. It's just crazy. Where is this money coming from? We don't know. We're trusting the Lord for everything. But more than that, the Lord is bringing in pastors and leaders from around the area for the inauguration of this, this structure from one person that was given a vision. And then we've latched on with that and carried that with him with CISA, Sunshine Iris Soccer Academy, and all that's going on. And there are many buildings that are already up there. So lots going on. If you don't know much about it, ask. And I would suggest if you're waiting for God to say, I am sending you, the Great Commission has already been given. So if you're looking for something very special, it, it starts in our own hearts with our desire and willingness. And when we pray for the Mozambicans and we also study and go through Isaiah 6, we'll have our marching orders. And then the Lord works with us. So sometimes we need to be reminded of that. And I, I really think in this season, we may have preconceived ideas of how we even hear and how we respond to the opportunities that God is giving us. So I would suggest you take that to the Holy Spirit and that we lay everything down. When Jesus walks in the room as he is today, the fear of God is on us. So we want to really be doing and saying and, and such what he is saying and doing and not our own ideas of what it looks like even in maintaining this place while we go. So I don't know. So we trust God for that. So if you have any pictures, any other pictures? Oh, there it is. Look at this is the building. Did you show any others, Andy? Okay, up the front. And uh, okay, so everybody on Facebook could see that. So you saw the building. So amen. And so many people, all eyes will be on this for the nation of Mozambique, for those uh, spiritual people, not just Iris Global, but all people to see what God can do in the midst of poverty, extreme suffering, the pandemic, and the Lord still provided. Amen? It's really a big deal. Amen. So there it is. Look at that. Impossible. So Pastor Jose has given out many prophetic words, visions, and spoken out very clearly at Frontline and to individual people and certainly to our teams of recent years. And he's been very clear. And so he hears from Holy Spirit too. So I would just suggest, fresh and new, we say, Lord, help me with these kinds of things. Amen. Okay, for Brazil, we have two very short 15-second clips or so. Four people from Brazil are going with us. They will meet us in Qatar, and then we will, we will land in Maputo, Mozambique together. So we have Eric and Amanda, Janiel, and er um, Hila. And so three of them, this will be their first trip. And the girl on the left is Amanda. This will be her fourth, I think. I'm not sure. Fourth or fifth. 
So let's watch what they, what they are sending us. This was early this morning. Hello, Christ. Nós vamos para Moçambique. Glória to God. We love you. We <laughs> show the next one. There's one more. Is it come up, Andy, or no? Amen. Okay. I, I think that's the last one except for Tanya's picture. Am I right? Is there any other video? Okay. This is a gal who has been overseas in Mozambique with us, I believe, three or four different times. I'm not sure about that. And we fell in love with uh, Tanya when she was in high school, Tanya Takalao. And she is married now with a little girl, four years old, Ishka. And they are living in Bali. They used to live in Jakarta. But we've been dialoguing quite a bit. And she sent a picture yesterday. And there's a couple more from years when we served together in Indonesia. Just a couple of them. So Andy's going to put those up as well. She just wants to send her greetings. I've shared with her. And someday we believe that she and her husband, Roy, maybe their daughter, Ishka, as well, will be with us in, in Mozambique, Ghana, other places. So there's a call on their life for the nations as well. So that's Tanya to the left. And that's Roy, her husband. And they are on the island of Bali, and she gave me the name of the mountain, and I can look at that in a moment. I don't remember the name, but it's very, it's not a picture. That's not, you know, a framed picture. That's actually a mountain in Bali, and that's Ishka. Yeah, it's not a Zoom background. Isn't that cool? So they send their love. So hello to Tanya. And uh, we have a couple more pictures real quickly you're putting up. Okay, this is the Four Musketeers. And that would be Michelle and Jamie and Tanya and Lawrence. And I believe we're in Monado. We had a governmental outreach and other things there. And it was a crazy group. And there are a lot of wonderful things that happened on that trip and other trips. So nice choice. <laughs> it was quick. We're trying to get. <laughs> I think there's one more, too. There's one more message or one more picture that Andy has. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we're preaching somewhere. I don't even know. I don't know where we were. Oh, it's in Monado. Yes. In one of the villages in Monado, and she was preaching, and so was Lawrence. And so she is um, very close to our hearts, and we're going to see what God will do there. So amen. So we just wanted to to say to you before we transition, children leave, Pastor Bill preaches, that God is doing something very mighty in our midst. It's, it's holy chaos. It's not simple. It's extremely lovingly moving forward. Let's do this with, it, with grace and mercy and love and support. So we'll be getting back with you with more. That we can all jump in together. So Father, thank you for this time. Thank you, Father, we get to cast more of this vision. Stir our hearts, Lord to see how big you are and what you're saying can be done right now. And thank you, Father. We just give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Children, you get to go. Woo That's the fastest they run in a while. <laughs> Wonderful gift of our cares to you. And Lord, that frees us up to battle in your name. God, we love you. We offer ourselves to you during this time and beyond in order to capture your heart within us, to carry your heart to the streets and to the nations. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you were following us last week, we talked about battle. How many remember that? Okay, three people. Great, okay. Well, we'll review then. We, taught, we went over so much territory. I listened to it again. We talked about Gideon and Joshua and David and Moses. We talked about Jehovah Saba. What is that? 
little louder. A little louder. No, that's Jehovah Nisi. Warrior, warrior. I love it. Let's just shout it back and forth. This side, warrior, this side, banner. Yes, we talked about both those names. Jehovah Saba, God, our warrior. God, my warrior. You can say that for yourself. God, my warrior. And uh, Jehovah Nisi, God, my banner. But what was the other name for Jehovah Nisi? Oh, silence in the crowd. What was it? Getting a lot of call outs. The Lord my banner, the Lord is my sign of conquest. Is that what she said? Okay, I didn't hear it. So sorry, I give you credit now. Let it be noted that Mackenzie has credit. Okay, so when we war, it's not just a little banner over me as love. You know, we talked about that. This banner is the Lord himself. And he is causing victory if we're willing to battle. If you step to the front lines, you are in a different position as far as receiving from the Lord. You'll receive everything you need to battle. And he'll give you some battles you're going to win. I've noticed that. Pastor Mary Pat and I, we have more battles than what we can win. And yet he does it anyway. He can overcome our battles. And as we're battling for ourselves and for others, he wins those battles. You take responsibility for another life as a warrior. And I'm telling you, you're going to win more personal battles. You take responsibility only for your own battles, and you'll be battling and battling and battling, and some you'll have some wins because he's just so gracious and loving and kind and all of that, but I don't think there will be the degree of victory as when you take responsibility for someone else. Many people have passed through Frontline here over the time that we've been in this building, 2005. Many of them were battling only for themselves. They never figured it out that we were about battling not only for ourselves to win with Jesus, but also take responsibility for others to battle. So when you see all these people up here, you say, I don't know that person. I, oh, I know that one, but I don't know that one. And, you know, you might be new to what's going on. We've been battling with these warriors in some cases for decades. And they are winning. They are building in places that are poor. Things are raising up from the ground after being terrorized, the plants even. Pastor Jose has gone through several different types of plantings, and some of them have been destroyed. But out of that same ground came a church. Wow. You plant, you sow some of it gets taken away by the enemy. Then you say, well, watch this enemy. And you give him a big kick in the teeth and say, here's a building. So now we're going to grow people. What do you think of that? Now we're going to grow people. Because the plant's okay. Sad, you know. Some of them got wiped out by all kinds of different things. But now, because of those plantings, something greater, a greater harvest has come. Jesus is proud of those standing with Pastor Jose. So when you see him on here with his brief little announcement about the establishment of the temple, the inauguration of the temple and so on, you say, oh, that, that was nice. The battles it took to get to this place, we're going to go there and we're going to jump up and down and celebrate with him. It's incredible. It's out in the middle of nowhere. And this church pops up. The people are like, how is this possible? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Those kinds of things come to people that take responsibility for others. Take responsibility for the harvest. Whether it's the streets of Canton or 
it's in the bush of Mozambique. We need to take responsibility for others in our lives. I hope, I sure hope, after this series of talking about battling, that you're taking responsibility over your household, over your generation of people in your own family, and that will be extended if you'll do that. When I took responsibility over being the pioneer, the Christian pioneer in my family line, when I took responsibility over the fact that I was the first believer that really made a difference in my family line, people started coming to the Lord out of my family. They started becoming believers, my mom, my dad, my sister, my uncle, my aunt. They started coming to the Lord. Miraculous turnarounds and breakthroughs as far as their salvation was concerned. Because they're really in a land of wilderness as far as spiritual things. It didn't matter. Because I was the pioneer and because God put it on my heart, I didn't come up with it on my own. Oh, I think I'll be a pioneer in the family and I will take responsibility over the household. No, I didn't have a clue. But that's the point. He will give us his heart. Think of that. He will give us his heart. Don't you need his heart? I do. I need it every day. My heart kind of starts to go, and he goes, no, no, you want my heart. You want my heart. He, he reminds us. The Holy Spirit reminds us of the things that Jesus taught us, the word says. I wasn't going to go there. How'd that happen? <clears throat> So last week we talked about how high is your tower. We asked a question. How high is your tower? We based it on Proverbs 18.10. And if you don't know that reference by now, wow. It's been said so many times. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. So then Tuesday night, it was fun night my birthday and I did communion that, that's a good night when it's your birthday and you do communion and I all I could think of all I could have in my mind's eye all that came to my heart in a picture was I was inside the strong tower and I represent all of us individually I was individually in the strong tower there was a table in there on the other side of the table was Jesus. And as often happens, I had a second chapter of that this morning. We were having communion together at this table of intimacy. Inside the safety of the strong tower, the, the enemy's arrows are smacking on the outside of the tower. We, we don't even hear them on the inside. We're, I'm so protected. And there's so much peace with Jesus. All his names are activated because these, my picture in the past has been these bricks are his name. That's why it's so strong. And I'm inside and I'm able just to be at peace and have a time of intimacy with Jesus. And that represents each one of us. He takes us into the strong tower individually and spends time with us if we're willing to accept his protection rather than trying to protect ourselves. We said last week, having a gun, again, you know, march with a gun, for the right to life, march in Washington, it wouldn't have as much impact as if we marched with the weapons of our war warfare that he gives to us. Some people feel safe with a number of guns in their house. Well, if anybody ever attacks this house, I'm ready for them. But they can attack your house, the enemy, and you can't use any guns against an unseen enemy. How do you swing at, at, at the enemy <laughs> when you can't see him? How do you shoot at the enemy when you can't see him? You have to be prepared in your heart, ready for battle. So this week, the Lord gave me one of the desires of my heart. The, the song, The Enemy Is Done, has been given out many places in the world. If you don't know what that song is, 
we're at the place where we'll give you a free CD. So it has other wonderful songs like one of the ones this morning on it. So ask for that. But that song has gone to a number of nations. When I get off the plane in some nations, the kids sing it back to me. The enemy is done. The enemy, ha, 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 ha. They sing it back to me. What a joy that is. It was a song written during a time of having malaria. God, heal me, heal me. Heal me, God. Here's a song. Often he will not give us what we think we need. Because he's so gracious and kind and good, he'll give us something so powerful, it'll impact our lives and the lives of others. People have been singing the song and almost had their fingers, a person almost had their fingers cut off in Brazil. They were singing the song. They were in a factory. And they came and showed us at a meeting that night. Look, my fingers weren't cut off. This is a piece of equipment that cuts things. My fingers were there. It came and it just put a mark across my fingers, but it didn't cut them off. I was like, wow, that's powerful. Come on. Come on. <laughs> that's awesome. And a person was playing this song over and over again for their father that was in the hospital, put it on a tape recorder, put it in their, put it in their father's pocket. He was not doing well at all. And the song played over, the enemy is done, ha, 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 over and over again. It was on loop. And at that time, the father walked out of the hospital. And I'm thinking, wow, God, that really was something from you. Well, I've asked him, especially in this season, I want a follow-up song, kind of the same genre, kind of the same intensity. And this week, he's giving that to me. So soon, we will be marching around, jumping around here with a battle song. That's what I asked him for, and he gave it. And I'm like, well, you know, it's great when we write together, you know, Jesus and myself, you know, it's not just communion at the table. You kind of, he gives you ideas for songs and he helps you write it. I, I love that. You, you should try it. I said, you should try it. Some of you don't think you can write songs. Every person in here can write a song. And he sings an individual song over each of you, I believe. And yes, I'm saying that to the entire internet. So go ahead, you know, think we're crazy. But I'm telling you, he gives these things individually and he sings over us with joy. Some people don't believe this. They don't get the, the, the frosting on the cake of what Jesus wants to give out to us in the midst of battle. They don't believe it. Oh, it doesn't say that in the Bible. Really? Zephaniah 3.17 says he sings over us. He joys over us. How many know that in these scriptures, the Amplified doesn't have enough meanings? It's a, the Amplified version is supposed to give us all the meanings of the Hebrew and the Greek. It doesn't have enough meanings. Meanings, not meanings. Meanings. The same thing with the names of the Lord. If you look these up, I'm going to give out some today. Some of the names of the Lord we've talked about. And a link to the 700 names of Jesus. If you've never checked that out, here's the document if you were to print it, so be careful. If you don't have enough paper and ink, or you want to get rid of all your ink at once, here's the 700 names and titles, and, you know, explained in all the different Hebrew and everything. But this is what prints out from this small little link here, so be careful. Be careful. It might be a weapon of your warfare if you print it out but you can at least look at it on the internet. The names of Jesus, 700. Well, we always say 700 plus. Why do we say that? Because they just go on and on and on. And when you get to heaven, they're going to be unlimited. It's like taking a diamond. You look at the various facets of a diamond. You ever seen a, engaged, a newly engaged girl? You ever notice? They kind of walk around like this. And they're, you know, they got, got their diamond, and they're so prou proud of it, and they're so proud of their relationship, so proud of what's coming with the marriage. They're just kind of, you know. 
I'd be, you know, I'd be hard put because I don't have that hair thing that you can, you know, do. But, well, his names are like that. Every facet of the diamond as you twist it gives out a new facet of his name. So many of these names you'll read in one book, this is what it is. You read in the next book, and it's a variation of that. And then there's another one that you find out in another book. I have like 12 books on the names of God. And they just, they have different nuances. They have different ways of saying the name. The Hebrew is such a beautiful language that it, it just is expansive in what it says about God. I think that's why Hebrew was chosen. It's just so expressive. And it can give out a picture to us. And then when we get to heaven, it's just exploded out of the water. How many names he has. Who he really is to us. We can start now, though. So you can start with this document. Again, look at <laughs> it. It's just fun to print this out, I tell you. You throw your ink cartridges away. That, I'm not throwing the name of God down. I'm just putting that down there. So uh, we'll pass those out now so that uh, you can take a look at some of the names that we went over. I'm sure you have two ears, so you can listen out of one ear and read out of the other. No, I guess that doesn't work. <laughs> so last week we covered a number of scriptures. Today I just want to cover two very quickly. And it's about what we need for battle, a character trait we need for battle, and that is humility. You would think you would need courage more than humility. I think you need humility more than courage. Let's take a look at just two passages. 1 Peter 5. If you have your Bible or some electronic advice device, I have to get this fixed. 1 Peter 5, starting with Verse 5, likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. These are familiar verses. And you would think that this would be just so easy for people to obey. But it's a real struggle for some reason. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Let him exalt you. Don't be on your own search for significance. You won't do well in battle. Don't put yourself in the position of being proud before God, he notices. And he, he has a hard time favoring those that are proud. He just does. In fact, he kicked one proud entity out of heaven and those that agreed with him. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Command. You've got cares, you're carrying them? That's against God's heart. You're supposed to be casting those on him. Some of us have to do it minute by minute. <laughs> There's so many cares. And if we take on the cares for others, like I said, taking responsibility for other people's battles to support them, come in like the Calvary or support them in prayer, or whatever our role would be, give counsel, give a scripture, lead them to the place where they, oh, don't forget Holy Spirit is the powerful voice inside of you that can lead you. We need to cast our cares on him and encourage others to cast their cares on him. We are not supposed to carry them. It's against God's heart. That's why he died. So he could take all the burdens. That's when you find real freedom. Giving them over to him. Be sober, verse 8. Be vigilant. 
because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion's lion seeking whom he may devour have you found that to be true or are you unaware that you are in a battle and the enemy is trying to eat your lunch and more than your lunch he's trying to destroy you kill steal and destroy you i'm hoping that this series will point out to us we are always in battle even in times of peace because the enemy wants to insert things in to destroy us it might just be a thought that we we grab onto and we just entertain it for way too long or we walk after it for way too long and before long we're farther away from the heart of god than we ever realized could be possible walks about like a roaring lion question is the enemy a roaring lion? No, there's only one. The Lion of Judah. A name of God. He's the only one that can roar and have the room pay attention in mass. The enemy tries to roar by screaming things into our hearts. Screaming things into our consciousness. You need to do this. You need to do this. He's pushy. He's loud. He tries to get us to do things that are against the heart of God. But, oh, the word of God's over here. But, ah, don't look at that. Look at me. Look at me. He makes a lot of fuss and a lot of, he, he makes a lot of noise. He tries to get our attention over on him so we'll listen to his voice. He can easily affect our emotions because they're kind of the same way. On their own, they just kind of scream. They just kind of want things. They want it their way. Feelings, feelings. They get hurt really easily. And some people don't let them repair, so they scream some more. The enemy loves the emotions, loves to get them riled up, loves to overtake us in that area. Instead of us relying on the spirit, our spirit, willing spirit, intertwining with the spirit of God. Then we're at our strongest. Then we can roar. Because all these names are meant for us to step into and emulate. And when we roar, we're battling. Verse 9, resist him steadfast in your faith knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Everyone that's a believer or unbeliever is being attacked. Those that are believers are attacked so that they will not help out anyone else or themselves. So sometimes it looks like the believers are getting smashed more than the unbelievers. It really does. And we're told in Proverbs, be careful. <laughs> Don't look at that. They're not really having the success that you think they're having. Well, it seems like it's a whole lot more fun to just forget about Jesus and live your life the way you want to. Looks like it at times. But it's deception because it all ends up crashing. Things don't stay the same. Someone can be happy, 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 and crash if it's not about Jesus. Where we have joy that's deep, much deeper than happiness. And when, we, when it bubbles up, we're strengthened, the Bible says, by joy. I love that, by joy. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. What's his desire? He wants to perfect us, establish us, strengthen us, settle us. And sometimes the last one is the hardest one. To settle us. 
why are you always wanting to change things and get out from under my process, God says. Why are you not subtle? Why are you not putting your roots down, growing in me, being established, strengthened, and perfected? That takes some time. Why are you always wanting to feel like, yeah, oh, I got to go. I got to go. I got to get out of here. I got to go somewhere else. I got to try something else. I've got to try something else. Let the Lord settle us. In settling us, he can do these other things. So the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. If we get distracted with all his screaming at us, and our emotions get all shook up because it's green with the enemy screaming. We will never really humble ourselves like he wants us to humble ourselves. If we focus on humbling ourselves, submitting to God, casting our care upon him because he cares for us, we will be sober, vigilant, we'll watch out for the enemy and his attacks, we'll expect them, we'll look for them. Not be surprised. Oh, man, where did this come from? This came out of the blue. Well, not if you're prepared by the Lord God himself. In his mighty names, you'll expect the attack of the enemy, and you'll be one step, no, many steps ahead of him. So when he comes, you kick him in the teeth. We had something physically that came this week to our family. One of our family members. And immediately, we kicked it in the teeth. We battled. Hey, you give a message on battle, you look for battle the next week. It's going to come. And it came. And it was destroyed. The attack was destroyed. Could have been serious. Ended up destroyed. And part of it was with joy. Seeing, yep, it's going to be a week of attack, you betcha. And I don't know how many people were under attack this week that we were in touch with. And supporting them, trying to help them as they battle through. And you look at it and you say, this is my calling. This is my destiny. If each of us can grab a hold of that for, for people we, that God gives us responsibility over. God gives us some good, positive influence in their life. We're not trying to control lives we're trying to enhance their battling so that they can receive all that god has for them you step into that take responsibility for other people you're going to find such joy in that you will be sober you will be vigilant you'll be ready for the enemy and when he walks around like a roaring lion honestly honestly you can get to the point where you laugh you're all strut, and you can't back it up. I'm in the strong tower. I'm with Jesus. I'm inside with him. He's across the table from me. He's smiling. All these arrows are coming to the outside of the tower. But I'm on the inside with Jesus. I'm telling you, there's something to this. You are overcomers in the making. And let it be to the maximum as he works through with us. Resist him. Resist the enemy. Steadfast in the faith. That everyone's experiencing it to one degree or another. If you have a week where you don't have this, you're like, what happened? <laughs> Resist him. Steadfast in your faith. Knowing that. Other believers around the world are going through the same thing and battle with them. Oh, but I have enough trouble with my own battles. How can I help someone else? Help someone else. Your own battles will go in a different direction. I guarantee this. I guarantee this. Based on God's word, those that battled helped others battle. And then their battles went better. More often than not. And okay, if you're martyred after you battled, you still go to heaven. You win. You win. You win. We all win. James 4, 1 through 11. And I will stop. James 4, 1 through 11. 
Where do wars and fights come from, um, from among you? Do they not come from your own desires for pleasure that war in your members? When we're at our worst, we're battling for our own pleasure. That's us at our worst. You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Are we going to God in the midst of that and asking for the right things? Or do we just battle for our own pleasure? You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is en en enmity with God? How many people on the streets of Canton or maybe the streets of Frontline, who knows? How many people think they can be a friend of the world and be good battlers? And they don't understand, how can this be coming against me? God, help me out, help me out, help me out, when they're living for their own pleasures. It doesn't work. You'll hear them complain and complain and complain. Where's God? How come he's not helping me? I don't know. I don't hear from him. I don't get this. Well, the reason you don't is because you're in the wrong battlefield. You're supposed to be in his battlefield. Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Ooh. Friend with the world, God starts battling you as an enemy. Not a good plan. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously. He wants our full loyalty. He wants us to salute. Probably the wrong side. He wants us to salute. God resists the proud, verse 6 first, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He's going to give more to the humble than to the proud. Are you ready for that? Then humble yourself. If you want more from God, humble yourself. If you want to battle better, humble yourself before God. Tell him that. Don't just go, don't walk around like you're humble. There's no particular position that God gets impressed that we're humble. I, I've seen rebellious people up here crying on their faces. And they would come and rebel, rebelliously say something to us as their leaders. It doesn't mean anything that someone's up here crying on their face before God if they have rebellion in their heart. We don't know what's going on with them. We hope good stuff, right? Always. But that's not always the case. So it's not the position of the body for humility walking around like, I'm really humble. I'm trying to be humble. I'm working on humility. Okay, I think this is this looks good. Okay, I think I'm I'm feeling more humble. It doesn't work. It has to be right inside the heart. We can be laughing and joyous and be totally humble. We can be giving the the testimony of the Lord, and it sounds a lot a lot about us. It's a lot about our oh man, it's about us. But since it's giving glory to God. It's not about us. And people get confused with that. Oh, I don't want, I don't want to you know, just tell people about this thing that happened to me. They'll think I had something to do with it. Well, just tell them I didn't have anything to do with it. God had to factor in my stupidity to get something done. Just tell them. And if they don't believe it, that, that's not up to you. But you just tell them. I know this happened because of God, not because of me. Tell them. Therefore, submit to God. Hmm, sounds familiar. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Hmm, sounds familiar. It's the same. James and Peter have it put together here. In the spirit, those guys are like, like this, right? But probably when they were following Jesus, they weren't. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Whew. Yeah, say it like it is. Go ahead, James. Go ahead, Spirit of God. Lament and warn, mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. 
Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Do not speak evil to one another, brethren, who speaks evil, and on it goes. Showing more humility in practical things as it finishes up the chapter. Draw near to God, he will draw near to you. It's very simple. Well, I, have, I, I, didn't, I don't hear from him when I soak, when I, when I fast. Keep at it. Keep drawing in. Keep drawing near. And he'll give you a picture that changes the situation. He'll give you a song you'll start singing, and someone's life will be changed. Someone's physical situation will get turned around. The ones we have up here doing worship, doing worship, I'm not even concerned about them with their personal worship. I can hear it when we're on the platform together. I know they're worshiping God privately. What I'm concerned about is, are, are we all just receiving the worship that they lift up, or are we worshiping on our own when the music isn't there? Are we singing songs? We, wow, where'd that come from? I'm singing a song. It's because your heart's so filled. I want to write it down. Go ahead. Don't let it pass by. Write it down. Drive a stake in the ground. Jesus gave me a song today. You'd be so encouraged when you face battle, you'll start singing and laughing and be joyful more times than worried, fearful, giving in to all those negative things that can be inside of our heart as well. You have songs in you. And they don't always have to be given out from here. They can be your own personal time in that strong tower with the Lord. Singing right to his face inside that strong tower. Have communion together. Give him everything you've ever wanted to say to him in person inside that strong tower. Have a struggle with prayer? Start talking to Jesus. Jesus. You are so amazing. Look what you did for me. I know there have been times when I've been driving my car. I could have been in an accident, but you stopped it. You put me inside the strong tower, and I was saved. I wasn't in the snowbank. I wasn't smashed into some car when I hit, hit some ice. You took care of that ahead of time for me. There are so many things I don't see you've done for me, Jesus. There are so many things that that you have prevented, you've cut off from happening to me. So when I do get hit, you are going to activate your mighty names, surround me with that strong tower, and it's going to be you and me, Jesus, you and me, and I'll be worshiping you with song. I'll be praising you with my mouth, with my lips. I'll be inside so thankful that the enemy can only get so far with me and then he's cut off. His roar goes to a whimper. His roar will sound like meow because you're standing for me, Lord, and I can stand for others inside there. Lord, don't forget, don't forget. Don't forget my friend. Don't forget my relative. Don't forget my ministry partner. Don't forget my wife. Don't forget my husband, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing for me, but please, I know your heart. You want to touch them with miraculous turnaround. Your prayer life will go pew, because it's about Jesus. It's with Jesus. You're spending time with Jesus. You're looking in the face of Jesus can't help but worship when you look into the face of Jesus. You can't help but sing. You can't help but just start. Blah, 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 blah. You don't even know what to say. It doesn't come out right. He doesn't care. He's the best interpreter of our blah, 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 that ever. We can groan, and the Holy Spirit helps us with the groanings. And he'll understand it. The Lord will understand it. Jesus, you're praying for us according to Romans 8, you are praying for us. Holy Spirit's praying for us. God the Father is receiving all the prayer. However that works, who knows? But the 
cool thing is you sandwich us in between praying for us, interceding for us. We're in between the two of you, safe, secure, in the strong tower. Jesus, I want more of the strong tower for these people. I want more dreams, pictures, revelations, words, things from the word of God that they can live out. I want the Holy Spirit's voice to be so clear to them that they will never make another misstep, God. Jesus, you're revealing yourself to us. Are we ready to receive it so we can battle? So we can clearly battle against the real enemy. Quit asking you so many questions and start terrorizing the enemy. Relax in your love. Rest in your love. Believe you're going to act when we're attacked. You're going to act. It's going to turn around the attack. Yes, Jesus. We offer ourselves to you humbly because that's the best for us. When we realize that it's much easier to go to our near knee quickly, it's much easier to repent very quickly, very quickly. It's much easier to receive correction that we need. Challenge, teaching, everything we need, Jesus, if we're humble. We humble ourselves before you. So here we are, Lord. Today we declare, I'm going after humility before God on a new level. I'm going after humility before you, Jesus, on a new level. I'm going to draw into that strong tower and tell you right up front, you are king, you are Lord, you are the commander, you're the Lord of the angel armies, you're my Lord, you're my Lord, you're my Lord. And mean it, back it up by action, not words, action for your name, blessing others, helping others, strengthening others, speaking into others, praying for others, battling with others. Yes, Jesus, we give you all glory. We give you all praise. No one in this room deserves any praise, any glory, only you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Check out that link. Check out those names. It's just a taste. And battle this week. And come in with the victories. Come in with the testimonies of how he backs you up and backs other people up that you're praying for, you're ministering to. That's a good week. And on Tuesday night, we will be back here <laughs> worshiping the Lord, getting prepared for battle, everything that's needed. And that is cool. I just want to stand here and just watch. Look at that. That says a lot. Tuesday night, fire and wind, 7 o'clock. Be blessed.